there must be no relenting in the fight against impunity, says Dr. Kofi Annan, a Ghanaian, a diplomat, and the then Secretary General of the United Nations on 1st July 2002 at the opening of the International Criminal Court, Cour Penal International, at The Hague. Kofi Annan made it emphatically clear that the ICC is our collective fight against impunity and we admit. The question, however, is what is impunity? Impunity is one of the principles for which the court was established. It is not one of the crimes that the court is meant to look at because the serious crimes for the international community in the Rome Statute are the following. First, the crimes of genocide. Second, the crimes against humanity. Third, war crime. And fourth, crimes of aggression. But what is impunity? Impunity so defined is simply an exemption of freedom from being punished or from facing the injurious consequences for any criminal act by using the power of the state. I said before the state sovereignty is given to certain individuals, quote unquote, known as state officers and public officers, those who had certain constitutional institutions, certain bodies that make decisions and make our laws, they make policies, but they can use such power of the state to insulate themselves or to protect themselves from being punished or from facing the criminal justice. And this again brings us to the context. Let's put context on the concept of impunity. Through the observations and survey, we have heard from different sources that it is apparently clear that even those who are referred to as honorables, politicians, members of parliament, decision makers, or those who are supposed to hold the position of leadership lack some morals and integrity. Some even use their firearms, personal firearms, to shoot in the air to scare off the crowds. But also they use their firearms to shoot the people they consider against them or their rivals. And do they get punished for such wrongful act? If they don't, that is another apparent example of impunity and the failure of our systems to bring justice to everyone and bring social transformation. Still, there is allegedly fear towards the leaders who sometimes mistreat their citizens just because they are holding some state offices and they have power, the deportation of certain individuals against their wills the failure to promote certain professionals because they tended to speak their mind on issues regarding the state and the truthfulness of justice. They use the power of the state in a way that it becomes personalized and this is done also in protecting themselves from facing the wrath of law. This is impunity, acting with impunity. We can first of all here state the two different aspects of impunity. De facto impunity includes also the psychological impunity, that is the psych, the attitude of the individuals that even after committing crimes and having criminal responsibility, 
and may be gift of mind, nothing shall happen to them. No police officer shall arrest them, and no court shall hear the case, and no prosecutor shall prosecute them, and no judge shall sentence them if found guilty. This is impunity in which every individual is presumed to be innocent till proven guilty and the most powerful, the men and women with money and state power use that to evade the justice system. Impunity is the exemption of the freedom from punishment or facing the injurious consequences of law by an individual who is relying on the state sovereignty. This is where things get bad and such individual using such power commit crimes, some of which may be serious, knowing and being convinced that no justice system shall bring them to books and their matters may just die natural death. They use money to bribe the system or to bribe the victims and also the relatives of the victims or they use their state power to intimidate other leaders or other heads of these institutions like the judges, the judiciary for instance, and even the police, the investigations, the intelligence. This happens not only in Africa but across the board. We have seen it in the United States of America, in the United Kingdom. We have seen it in several European countries, even countries that we consider quote-unquote civilized nations impunity becomes the hindrance, the impediment to the access to justice. Let's put this into context because there is de facto from the, on the face of it in which we see the attitude, the psychology of the people, the psyche of the nation when people carry out and conduct themselves in a manner that they believe in themselves to be untouchables and to be beyond and above the law. And they tend also to intimidate and uh, humiliate judges. But also there is the jury aspect of impunity in which the institutions and laws are designed, uh, police are designed to enforce impunity or put impunity in the system. Rome Statute puts it candidly clear under the, the context of intervention by the court. The court can only intervene in the criminal investigations in the condition in which the state is unwilling to act or to prosecute, or the state is not able the lack of ability to prosecute. But I want to again look at this from the African Trilogy by Alfred Chinua Chebe, a Nigerian from Igbo community, a writer and a world-renowned and revered writer of novels who lived between 1930 and, and 2013 who came up with three novels whose titles help us to carry out the rationalization of impunity, such as the publication in 1958 under the title Things Fall Apart, 1960 when Nigeria got her independence, the title No Longer at Ease, and he followed with another interesting and a lovely novel that was published in 1964 under the title Arrow of God. Let me use this to explain myself in the political jurisprudence. First, in Things Fall Apart, 
when the leadership seeks to derail the system and to fight the state using the powers of the state, then things may fall apart, the institutions may collapse, and uh, other offices may be dysfunctional, individuals may be intimidated, the leader becomes a dictator, a authoritarian leader, and he becomes a turns bad and evil to his own people. In such a situation, things fall apart because there is no possibility to access justice. If anything, there is no fair administration of justice in such scenario. Another worst case scenario that moves us from things fall apart of Chinua Chile when the state is no longer in control and in charge and the statehood cannot manage the judiciary, can no longer manage the executive, and can no longer manage the legislature, then we get to title number two, no longer at ease, published in 1960 by the same Chinua Chebe. Not so much addressing the issue of impunity, but the title in itself gives us the literary philosophy to look at the symbolism between no longer at ease as a title and uh, the behavior of the politician who seeks to deal with a situation that is no longer working. Even though Alfred Genoa Chwebe's focus was on the colonial Nigeria and how colonialism, Christianity, managed to get into the African system I, to an extent that it was derailing the system. And we find that the main characters of the novels end up hanging themselves. No longer at ease means that when the leadership that is using impunity as a tool gets into trouble and things fall apart, there is desperation. The leader seeks to use arrogance, the state power, to intimidate the institutions, to intimidate judges and the elected members, but also uses arrogance to bribe and buy out the will of the people. The people themselves can be corrupted politically and can be bought by such individuals just to favor their side of the story. And this is explaining they no longer at ease when it begins by trial, when Okuonko took bribe and ended up in court. In this case, we find that corrupting the system brings the question of impunity with itself and the use of corruption to steal the public funds, the taxpayers' money, to bribe the police officers, lawyers, to bribe prosecutors, judges, and derail the system and uh, make justice dysfunctional has been witnessed in different jurisdictions. And that is no longer at ease. No longer at ease again can make the leader become a dictator and uh, circumvent law to suit his own needs and interests. And such leaders, knowing very well that one day, sooner or later, liking or not liking, and not in their interest, will leave power. They want to leave it to people they trust most, and especially the family members, no longer at ease. No longer at ease moves us to a desperate situation when nothing works for the people and individuals are left on their own devices to settle their matters and no justice system is functional and there's no state after all. In this case, it moves us to the third book in the trilogy that is Arrow of God. Arrow of God may be equated with the act of God by the English jurists and that is now beyond the human capacity, ability to deal with the disputes, deal with the instabilities, uh, questions of disorderliness in the society, 
lawlessness, and arbitrariness. Out of God, the final book in the trilogy by Chinua Chwebe is seeing that desperate situation of punishment in which the leader does not understand why in one place he is to be punished and who is punishing him. It is like the question, who will bail the cat? And this is where the arrow of God as a gift of leadership that will fight the mighty one, the alien power, the alien system among the Igbo community actually become the morals in this novel. But I would like to use this in uh, a literary manner to bring into picture our question of the political jurisprudence, critical jurisprudence, to understand that when the entire legal system collapses, what is left is disorderliness, civil unrest, revolutions, uh, genocide, and a very bad situation that only needs the intervention from above. And that is why I chose deliberately the African trilogy to bring to our understanding the concept of impunity. So impunity in itself is negative and it is something that must end. And impunity is in the mouths of human rights defenders and advocates as well as civil society members and those who love the society, even the spirituals, always tend to use their authority to fight against impunity. But now we understand what is impunity and why impunity is so bad to an extent that it must be fought against and why we should not just hope for the hour of God to come or that apocalyptic end of the humanity to get to our human reality. I hope with this explanation and the use of the African trilogy to explain impunity, we have understood this important topic in the political jurisprudence and critical legal theory in which the African thought can as well guide us in understanding what would be otherwise very sophisticated and complicated concept, the impunity we are talking about. Bye and thank you for following.